Yo, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new video. I am JS Carr and I'm super excited to be back because I haven't posted a video in a couple of months, but don't worry about that. I'm back and I'm really excited to do this. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made my song To The Top, which was released on NCS. I'm so happy because it's my second release on NCS and I always dreamt about being on NCS. I'm going to be showing you why I did what I did and how I did it. All right, so let's go straight into the projects. Let's put our headphones on. We are inside FL Studio now. As you can see, the project is the most basic thing you'll ever see. Just look at this. If, if I would try to explain to the top in a simpler way, it basically consists of a synth, drums, and a breakdown with softer synths. That's all there is to it. The most important thing about this song, I think, is either the synth in the drop or the drums in the drop. And we are going to be starting off with the drums. The drums, as you can see, sounds like this. And yes, it is a sample. I can tell you guys, years ago, I used to hate samples. Last year in 2021, I reached out a point in my career as a producer where I was so uninspired by everything I heard, by everything I was making, you know, in 2021, everyone was releasing a specific genre. I'm not going to name it, but the industry was a mess and I was stuck and I felt bad about everything I was going around in the industry. Did what I had to do. I took a week to just make any kind of music with no restrictions, with no rules. And one of the rules I really thought about was letting myself use as many samples as I wanted to. If they inspired me and if they created a good result, why not? You know, in this case, I am not using melodies or anything created by anyone else except for these drums. You know, I'm still a little uh, about using melodies or anything that is on a loop, but you can still do that. Like, there's no problem. Let me just tell you something. And that's something I learned while doing this. Audience, real people do not care where your sounds come from. They don't. They just want to listen to a song they like, and that's it. They do not care whether you use the most advanced plugin ever, the most expensive analog gear ever. They don't care. Spoiler alert, they don't care. As long as your end result is good, they don't care. So I did what I had to do, and I used these drums, which sound fantastic. And guess what? I didn't do anything to it. I just added a de for some reason. Let me just play it once. It just has a de because I felt like it had too many highs for some weird reason. But anyways, um, what I ended up doing after this what was add more uh, sounds. In this case, I added this trash. I added a hi-hat. And I added more hi-hats, which I actually made. The idea for this one was to actually make it sound a little bit analog, a little bit simple. And I think I nailed it pretty good. Next, and actually almost done, the most important thing in the job was, and it still is, the sounds, the synth, which sound like this together with the drums. Remember, this is not mastered, neither mixed correctly. So this is just the, the rough draft of, of what I actually did at the end. Now, uh, the way this sound was made is it is all about, it's not even about the sound itself, but the way I use this sound. It sounds like this originally, but when you play it together with a, with a note on top, it sounds like this. So you can do something like, and it sounds so interesting. The second thing I, I learned from breaking rules was actually using sounds the way they're not supposed to be used. Cause at the beginning, I wanted to create a melody that was just the baseline progression. So the sound would be like, or something like that. But 
I accidentally and or just by trial and error, I tried to do a chord with something that's supposed to be a bass line, and it just sounded so good. It sounded like. And from there, the story just, it was just all about flowing. The melody basically consists of a bass line progression that has harmonics on top or a sort of triad or a seventh or a ninth, whatever it is, depending on the, on the, on the, on the sound. Um, for example, the first sounds, the first drop hits are triads. And it's basically as if I'm playing a minor uh, G chord. However, there are two things that I'm doing on this drop that makes the drop so interesting. And then that is, it has good chord progression. So it's not the usual G, F, A, C, or something like that. It's a very complex sounding progression. I also have different uses for the same synth. Here's an example. In this first part of the drop, I have a very long or sustained way of using the synth. It sounds like this. Oh, sounds like this. Interesting. But then I decide to use the synth in a very short way, as if it's a pluck, as if it's a completely different sound. But it's not, it's just the same. It gives you a completely different vibe while maintaining some consistency to the overall tone. So I play around with a lot of contrast and by contrast, I mean, I used a lot of sustained notes and then little plucks, then sustained, sustained, plucks, sustained, and then I used a lot of plucks. And if we listen to this plucks, they sound very cool. You wouldn't really think they're actually this sounds because they just sound so different. However, there's also another thing that I did to this melody slash song that just made it even better. And what I did was forget about the grid. I forgot about the grid completely. All the melodies that I made, some of the sounds that I created are not quantized. They are not following the rhythm of the grid. So for example, you can see that this note is actually touching this line, but this one isn't. This one isn't either. This one is, this one isn't, this one isn't. And this two are actually overlapping each other, which would normally wouldn't be something you do, but they are doing that as if it's a small chord. By doing this, what I achieved was basically a more dynamic melody because it's not always on beat. It's not always on beat. So, so this song tends to pull you and push you in a way because the swing is so crazy. Now, um, to summarize, the melody is interesting because I am using it in many different ways, different length of notes and also different rhythms for the leads. And that creates what to the top is basically because this song is just repeating the same thing over and over again. If you can see the second part of the buildup, it's actually just a low passed uh, bass. That's it. Now I do have a sound on the second part of the first, or like the first part of the drop, and it sounds like a vocal. It sounds like this. Actually, no, it's actually supposed to be like uh, one zero semitones for four minutes. Um, what I did with this vocal sample was basically follow the rhythm of the bass line or the chords, the part that sounds like a chord. And that way you can have like an A, B, A, B, question, answer, question, answer. That creates a catchy melody, having something that, that actually replies to each other and just helps each other. And by helping, if we actually go to the second part of the drop, or like the second drop, my bad, if we go to the second drop, if you listen to it on Spotify or something like that, you'll notice that I used some chords on this part. They're literally just following the same rhythm of the synth. However, they are way more complex when you see it on the piano roll. They're not only two notes. That's what I mean. They have a couple more notes. They're cons they're, they consist of about three notes. Complex, you know? Now, uh, 
there is something very interesting about this song as well. And when I was creating this song, um, by the time I was thinking about creating an album, because I have like 20 different songs that sound like this one um, in their own way. Um, in 21, 2021, I had the idea of releasing a, an album. And one of the things I learned from working on an album, which is not going to be released, um, was working fast. And I noticed that this sound was so good by itself. And it was so unnecessary for me to add layers that I ended up using it just by itself. It has no sub. The only way I added sub to this was by literally adding a parametric EQ2 and just boosting the lows. Isn't that simple? Yes, it's actually very simple. And I added a Pro MB and I boosted some of the mid frequencies. Then I worked on the image of this. I made some of the lows mono because if I don't have a sub, I want to make sure that the sub frequencies of that sound are actually mono. And by that, I used Ozone Imager 9. And yeah, I mean, the song was pretty much done. Listen to this. If you ask yourself again, how is it possible to make it sound so full with just one sound? It's a matter of having a good starting point, of course, a good sound, but also the way you use it. Remember, use a ton of contrast, use good melodies, melodies that you can sing to, that you can remember. Um, I don't know. Songwriting wise, this song is pretty basic, but pretty catchy. And I would say pretty good. I don't know, maybe because it's mine, I can't say that it's good, but I think it's a pretty good song. Now, for the breakdown, so what did I do? Honestly, I went overboard and I did the most advanced, crazy shit I've ever done. And what I did was I copied the bass line and I pasted. it. And the breakdown was done. All I did was just make the, the notes longer and they sound like this. That's it. This is just a pad. I'm pretty sure I changed it a ton, but that is just a pad. And that's it. Another thing that I did for this song that I can share with you guys and hopefully can teach you guys something with it is I limited myself um, to only use one sound for everything. Um, normally I create layers and layers and layers and layers, and it's always a never ending story, bro. If you focus on layering and layering and you never end layering. So my idea for this song and album at the moment was to create music that had main sounds. Um, and when I say main sounds, I not only mean synths and basses, I also mean uplifters, downlifters. I don't want to use 20 different ones. I just want to use one that sounds good. And I actually learned this from studying other people's music. If you listen to Flume, for example, he doesn't have 20 different uplifters or 20 different snare sounds. He just has one good one. And that's it. In this case, I added one uplifter that sounds like this. Simple. And that's it. That's the only thing that's creating tension before the drop hits. Pretty crazy, right? Now, he, the song is pretty much done. Mastering wise, remember, I always work very clipping wise. To me, clipping sounds very good and I enjoy it. I know it might be wrong um, to some of you because you like dynamics and more range in your music, whatever. But this is the goal that I was going for. This was my goal. So my, my mastering is pretty much just Stereo imaging, EQing it to give it tone, adding a little bit of comp compression to add some color, and then some invisible limiter and boosting it the hell out of it. And that's pretty much how I did To The Top. To The Top is one of my favorite songs ever. And if you have not heard it yet, I suggest you check it out using the link in the description. I actually recorded this video twice, guys. I recorded this video twice because I was not recording the sound from my computer. I'm not so used to Max yet. And actually, uh, I don't want to miss out on this, but I wanted to show you guys my studio. And it's a new studio. It's a very simple one, but maybe we can make that a video. If you guys want me to make that, 
let me know in the comments. And also I'm going to be uploading another video where I show you all the vocal that goes around a song. It's just going to be a, gen a general one, but I'm going to be using the vocals from this song. And I'm also going to show you how to create the synth from this song in a separate video. Um, but yeah, it feels so good to be back. It feels so good to be back. I'm honestly excited to be here just recording a video, talking to you guys. Um, yeah, I love you guys. I love you guys a lot. I'll see you soon for another video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. I forgot to say that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.